Hey guys, welcome back to Oak Abode. Today I just wanted to do a little IKEA kitchen update because it has now been about three years since we installed our IKEA kitchen. A lot of you guys might have seen our IKEA kitchen tour and our brutally honest IKEA kitchen review where we talked about some of the pros and the cons that we had seen having the IKEA kitchen for like a year or two. Now that it's been three years, I just wanted to do a little update, give you guys the lowdown on what we still like, what we maybe don't like so much, and as things are starting to crack and crumble a little bit, maybe some of the products that we don't recommend as much as some others. I'm also gonna be answering a few of the questions that we tend to get on repeat. A lot of those questions are regarding where we got certain things in our IKEA kitchen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and write an entire blog post where we got our cabinet hardware, where we got our our countertops. I'm gonna go ahead and link all that for you guys on our website. So that link is gonna be below for you. Okay, for this three year IKEA kitchen update, the main things that I wanna talk about are the cabinets themselves, how the drawers are holding up, the countertops, the dishwasher, and the sink from Ikea. If you guys wanna see more footage of the actual kitchen itself, they're not really our best videos because they were some of our earlier videos, but you can check out that Ikea kitchen tour and the brutally honest Ikea kitchen cabinet review in the description below. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is how the cabinets have held up. Long story short, we are still really happy with how the cabinets have held up. We have not noticed any sort of bowing or any sort of cracking or peeling of the paint. And that says a lot because these concrete countertops we made are two inches thick. They are huge, they are heavy. And the fact that these countertops are still holding up as well as they are says a lot. I can hop up on these countertops to get stuff that's higher up in the cabinets. We've never had any sort of issues at all. What's funny to me is that a lot of random people like to hate on Ikea cabinets. They say they're bad quality. To me, something that's good quality is something that lasts. And like I talked about in that Ikea kitchen review, one of the things we love about Ikea is their stellar warranty that they are known for standing by. So it's not one of those things where you get some random brand cabinet, they say they have a warranty, and then you find out everything going wrong with your cabinets isn't covered. Ikea is pretty notorious for taking back just about anything and everything that is cracking or crumbling and has a warranty on it. I know people like to hate on the cabinets because they're particle board, but to me, it functions great. And we have other plywood cabinets that have bowed with temperature and moisture changes so yeah personally I would much rather take this specific particle board that is tried and true and have it last in my kitchen for a really long time so far so good the next thing I wanted to talk about in our IKEA kitchen is how the drawers have held up so we have the IKEA Max and Mara drawers but one thing that drives me crazy is when drawers don't slide smoothly I personally have a really bad habit of like kind of leaning on drawers when I'm opening them if I'm trying to reach in to get something. I try really hard not to, but I know I still do it from time to time. So these drawers so far, we don't have a single drawer that has any trouble sliding. It's not catching, the hinges aren't bending, they are really, really solid products. Kind of on that note, the doors and drawer fronts are also holding up really well. A few people in the last video talked about the doors being made of solid wood and the cabinets being made of particle board. That's actually not true. So the doors that we have are definitely made of particle board. They're not solid wood. I think Ikea in the United States offers like one to two options that are solid wood, but they're much more expensive than the doors that we got. And we're super happy with how ours are holding up. There's no chipping in the paint. There's no peeling in the paint. And we live in Wisconsin where there are major fluctuations in humidity and in temperature. So, so far so good, three years in. The next thing I'll talk about are the countertops. So we got a lot of questions on our countertops. This isn't necessarily an Ikea specific update because we did make our concrete countertops ourselves. We made them for a couple hundred bucks. We are super happy with how they turned out and how they've held up. In fact, we love them so much. We made concrete countertops for our upstairs master bathroom, the double vanity, and then we also made white concrete countertops for our guest bathroom. And what we did is since we made those first IKEA videos, we got so many questions on how we made the concrete countertops that we made a whole video with the process that we use to build our poured concrete countertop. So I'll try and see if I can figure out how to add a card, but I'm gonna link that video here and I'm also gonna put it in the description for you in case I screw up the technicalities of adding cards. So I'm not gonna go too into the process of how we made the concrete countertops. I will say three years in, we still absolutely love them. Kind of the downside of the two inch thick concrete countertops that we made is that they are just so heavy. I was pretty nervous about putting them on the Ikea cabinets. 
I figured if any cabinets could take them, it would be the ones with the most solid warranty. And so far, so good. I did write extensively about what sealers not to use on your concrete countertops if you make them, because we've tried a few different sealers and there's only one that works well for us. So if you guys are wanting to make your own concrete countertop, I definitely recommend watching that video or at least checking out the blog post that we wrote on it so that you can see which sealers we don't recommend and which one we absolutely swear by. But yes, long story short, three years in, still would do the concrete countertops a million times over. I know some people wrote in comments on the other Ikea videos that Ikea countertops are kind of notorious for being on the softer side, maybe not on the best quality side. Now that's not something I can verify and I do know that there's a lot of people that said Ikea were bad quality when in reality they just kind of hate that it disrupted their industry. So check out those countertops for yourself because I don't know if it's true or not. In case you can't tell already, there are a lot of conflicting opinions on the internet and not all of them are really based on much. Speaking of pricing, I also did post a video a little bit ago breaking down exactly how much our kitchen remodel costs and breaking down exactly how much our Ikea kitchen costs. So I'll try and put that all in one playlist or I'll link it in the description below. So if you have questions on how much our kitchen costs, you can check out those videos too. Sorry, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the board. There were just so many comments on that Ikea kitchen cabinet review that I obviously don't have time to respond to each one individually. So hopefully by throwing all this information out there at once, you guys can pick and choose what you need to know. Another thing I wanna throw in really quick is actually the toe kicks. So you probably noticed that there wasn't a lot of footage of the toe kicks in those first two Ikea videos. And that was very intentional because we got the Ikea toe kicks and we did not like them. We had read that they were kind of cheap and flimsy in the first place. That is definitely true. So right now Ian is building custom toe kicks out of wood. It's taken a while because it's not our first priority in the house right now. We have other bigger projects going on. However, about a year and a half in, those toe kicks kept popping off. They just didn't look very good. They had a lot of gaps. So we decided to just throw those away and do custom toe cakes out of real wood. Toe cakes were pretty cheap though, so I don't necessarily getting them just to kind of pop in place until we were ready to get to it. Last couple things I wanna talk about are the sink. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the faucet since that's from Ikea too. And then that Ikea dishwasher that we got. So first of all, let's talk about the sink. We had a lot of questions on our sink. Our sink was called Domes Joe, Doms Joe or Domes Joe. And unfortunately, one of the downsides of Ikea is they discontinue a lot of really good products. Our sink is one of those. So we ordered our sink and then we found out literally a couple weeks later that sink that had been in circulation for years was discontinued. So unfortunately, you cannot get this exact sink anymore. They do have a new product that is pretty similar. Um, I think it's called have in or something, but I linked that in the blog post with where we got everything for our kitchen below. If you do want to get an affordable farmhouse apron sink for your kitchen, I looked everywhere for an affordable farmhouse sink and they are really, really hard to find. I mean, they really are exorbitantly expensive. So this one was hundreds of dollars less than anything else I could find. And I do recommend it for the most part. I know some people have said that they've had cracking problems with their sinks from Ikea. Three years in, ours has not cracked. So either we've been lucky or it just doesn't happen a whole lot. That being said, just a few months ago, we did get our first chips in the sink. So I'm gonna show you guys a close up. They're really small. They're really not a lot to worry about. But over time, I think those are gonna be more likely to stain. I wish I knew how they happened. I am pretty rough with that sink, so it probably was my fault but there are a couple little chips, tiny, tiny little chips in the sink. Otherwise, any scratches I have found them right out with Barkeeper's Friend. Um, I just scrub a little bit and any scratches buff right out. So has stayed very clean, hasn't stained three years in, have a couple tiny chips. I still give it like a B plus. I'm still very happy with that sink for a couple hundred bucks. That being said, the faucet is something I do not recommend. So the sink is really big and the faucet doesn't have a retractable handle. I think that's what those are called. So it is a nightmare trying to keep this sink clean because it's not easy to just turn on the faucet and rinse food down the drain. This was a faucet I actually didn't necessarily want. It was just when we were designing our Ikea kitchen, it was like a default option and I just forgot to change it. But since faucets are not super duper cheap, I haven't jumped at replacing it. I can't wait till we replace that sink because I'm finding it is really important to pull that faucet head out, wash all the food down the disposal and get rid of it. Unfortunately, I have to give this thing a deep clean every few days because food gets stuck on there. It's not fun. Long story short, don't recommend the faucet. The last thing I wanna talk about is how our Ikea dishwasher has held up. I believe there are quite a few different models. What I've heard is that in the United States, 
they actually use Whirlpool to make their appliances. So their fridges, their dishwashers, say what you want about Whirlpool, whatever the case, this one has held up really, really well. So we paid, I wanna say eight, 850 for ours. That was the higher end model. And the reason that we got the higher end model was because we really wanted to be able to have that cabinet ready dishwasher. So it had the cabinet front. Last I checked, and this is crazy because it was one of their best products, but last I checked, they discontinued this specific version. I'll have to double check. They might have a new version out now. But that cabinet ready front might not be available anymore, which is crazy. That's one of the reasons we went for an Ikea kitchen in the first place. That being said, I can totally attest to this dishwasher being very effective. My parents have a much more expensive dishwasher than we do, and I swear ours works better. It does take a long time to complete a cycle. I wanna say like, three, three and a half hours, which is a long time, but I'm assuming the reason it takes a while is because it's conserving water. So I'm fine with that. We run it about once a day and I do not baby our dishwasher. So the fact that it has held up this well for this long is really, really cool. I was definitely nervous about ordering an appliance from Ikea. It all worked out in our favor because I do love that dishwasher. All right guys, that's kind of a summary of our three year Ikea kitchen update. I'm gonna try and do maybe one of these per year so that as things start to fail, you guys can tell which things fail sooner rather than later. That being said, these cabinets are just still super solid. The drawers run really, really smooth. The soft close hasn't been compromised at all. And I'm honestly shocked that under the weight of two inch thick concrete countertop and sometimes me jumping on those countertops to get stuff, that these cabinets have not wobbled, they have not bowed, they have not cracked. They show no signs of giving in at all. If you couldn't tell already, I definitely do still recommend the Ikea kitchen. There are some downsides. If you haven't watched that brutally honest review of the downsides of Ikea kitchens, you can click on that video for a little more insight into the ordering and delivery process, which isn't always the greatest. Like I said, I wrote a whole blog post for you guys linking everything in our kitchen, so you don't have to wait for me to respond now. I've got everything that we use to design our kitchen linked below. And then of course, the other big question was how we made those concrete countertops. So a whole video for that if you're curious. If you guys aren't already following us on Instagram, our Instagram handle is oak underscore abode. And of course, if you guys haven't already subscribed to our channel, we would love if you would hit that subscribe button so that you can join us again in the future. I know I probably didn't hit every question you guys have. So any questions that I'm missing, feel free to leave a comment below. I will do my best to get to those, but otherwise I will see you guys next time.